I think that there are two different reasons. One is just that she really remains one of the most psychologically acute novelists in the whole tradition of European novel writing. I think that's the reason that I keep on coming back to her. The other reason, though, is that her sentences are extraordinarily beautifully crafted. So it's that combination of the psychological insight and the, uh, the, the linguistic sharpness and the beauty of the craft that I find so compelling. Part of me, as a scholar of 18th century literature, wants to kick back a little bit against that question and say there actually are, let's even say, dozens of writers who are uh, perhaps not quite as extraordinary as Austen, but well worth reading for many of the same reasons. So I think of a novelist like Frances Burney, who Austen read when she was growing up, and I would encourage readers who love Austen to read Burney's novels as well. Or you know, Austen was surrounded by a sea of female contemporaries, novelists like. Mariah Edgeworth, uh, Elizabeth Hamilton, uh, Amelia Alderson Opie, who were also writing really wonderful books. So there's a tendency to think of Austen as coming kind of out of the blue, just a miraculous prodigy. And I'm not unsympathetic to that view, but there's another sense in which we see Austen as writing at a time when after hundreds of years where it was very difficult for women to have careers as published writers, suddenly there is actually really um, a, a publication market and a readership that's there for writers of novels in particular. That's really the trick, and I say in the opening of the book that if there's one thing that a book on Austen needs to do, it's to, uh, it's, it's to have some kind of an insight into Pride and Prejudice that will surprise and please readers. That's difficult, of course, because it's a book that's so familiar and has been so often chewed over by critics. Uh, I guess my personal take on Pride and Prejudice, and something that I hope comes across in the pages of my book at the places where I treat uh, treat Pride and Prejudice would be to say that it is a more satirical novel than people sometimes think of it being on the face of it. It's a novel that can e we can easily sort of soften its edges in our memory and think of it as a fairy tale romance, the coupling of these two extraordinary people um, who take a dislike to each other at first and then overcome that over the course of the novel. But it's a novel that is sharply critical of things like the culture's tendency to disinherit women at the expense of men, uh, the kinds of over hypersensitivity to gradations of social cr class that you might see embodied in a character like Lady Catherine de Bourgh. So I'm certainly drawing out some of those elements as I write about the book. When we use the term influence, in some ways, that would be pretty narrow. So um, I'll rephrase the question and say, uh, there are a number of other novelists that make me think of Austen in good ways. Henry James would be one of the 19th century novelists that people would put in a, in a line or a tradition uh, that has Austen in it earlier on. And a novel like Portrait, The Portrait of a Lady uh, would be one place that I think we can see Austen's influence. I think of a 20th century novelist like Muir spark in some ways being a more interesting place to think of Austen having a kind of sequel afterlife. Uh, these novels of Muriel Sparks, I'm thinking especially of The Prime of Miss Jean Brody or The Girls of Slender Means. Um, they are, uh, the language has the same kind of jewel-like precision that we associate with Austen's fiction, but there's also uh, a, a rather similar acuity of insight, uh, particularly into these very fine gradations of social distinction or of social power that you get in groups. So Austin is one of the great novelists of, um, uh, let's say, of dependency and power relations. And Muriel Spark uh, is a worthy successor to Austin in, in that regard. I've had a different favorite Austen novel, I think, for every stage of life. When I was a child, uh, Pride and Prejudice was hands down my ultimate favorite. I had a very battered copy that I think I bought at a garage sale that I read to death, like all the p pages were falling out and the covers were falling off. But since then, each, each sort of major stage of life seems to have brought me to an appreciation of a different Austen novel. So when I was in graduate school doing my PhD, Mansfield Park was certainly uh, the favorite 
favorite novel of that period because it's such a great novel about being a sort of um, powerless peripheral person in a, in a bigger enterprise <laughs> that you're kind of looking at from the outside in. As an undergraduate, I would say Sense and Sensibility must have been my favorite because of the ways that it's about the tumultuous emotional lives of young women. But in my current stage of life, I think I can say that Emma really is my favorite. Uh, the two uh, novels of Austin's that I teach most often these days are Emma and Persuasion, uh, and Austin's uh, later novels for me now seem to have a richness and a complexity that's just unbeatable.